All right, so the first replay is uh, from Koyatek KPV, and he says replay for Pipiga Tuesday. NA 4.5k Master 2 MMR. I lost to the Protoss with mining below mine. Okay, he didn't really say what exactly he wanted to look at. If you guys want to be more exact, by the way, you can also just give me uh, give me tips about early game, give me tips about unit composition, scouting, whatever. He didn't really say anything besides the Protoss mined more than him, so uh, less than him, and he still lost, so we're gonna take a look at that. Just right off the bat, I want to say that Zerg usually mines more than the other two races. That's just how Zerg works, so that's not exactly our winning condition unless you severely outmine the opponent. Alright, we're making one overlord too many. We're making <laughs> three overlords too many. Um, you're... I assume you forgot if you already made an overlord or not and made two more. But this is very bad, you should cancel these. This is, too, too, this is too many minerals uh, for the early game. Okay, then you see there is a Stargate, right? So already you don't need spores that early. Uh, in general, if you start your spore, the moment the oracle spawns, it will be in time. Spore crawler is built very fast, 20 seconds. The target is here, so slightly before the oracle leaves. Probably to be very, very safe. But uh, an oracle takes quite some time to build, so you don't need spore crawlers yet, ever. The earliest time you're gonna need them is like 3... Let's say 3.20. Earliest. Uh, so... So yeah, and you keep... Three in gas. I'm, I'm wondering if this is some special build that I'm not aware of because there's no zergling speed as well, right? Okay. Double Evo chamber. You see at what time this arrived? There's actually a void ray first, but anyways. Uh, in general, guys, if you see, especially if you see the Stargate. You don't need a spore at all if it's Voyager first, this was Oracle first, but you see the Oracle takes 37 seconds, that obviously can be sped up by the Chrono Boost, but it still takes qu quite a while, so... You see it spawns now, this is where you, your spores need to be started, and just knowing these, type of, these types of timings just will make your early game more smooth, so... First of all, if you want to improve your ZVP, and I can tell you that right now, take a look at um, a couple of replays of pro gamers opening normal in ZVP and copy that. If you're masters too, you're good enough to copy that and you will know exactly when to make the overlords, that, that, that should be a given, and when to make spark crawlers and such things. Uh, so, especially against, like, even against the earliest Oracles, your spores would have been way too early and you made too many overlords, obviously, your speed is too late, you mine too much gas, so there's a lot of things that you can clean up in your early game. Um, Already. And double evil chamber isn't really a thing against Protoss, but I'm gonna, gonna let that one slide for now. Okay, we're going 1-1 one, one Ling style. You're already very far behind, by the way. Like, this is not a good early game whatsoever for you, so... Alright. Losing a couple of workers, but kill four adepts, that's okay. We're gonna take it, uh, a look at it from your vision. You don't really know what's going on. In general, also one thing um, for, for, for sure that you should always have is a Zergling on both expansions and in front of your opponent's base. Especially if your opponent has a Stargate in the wall, you can see what their follow-up is because you can see if they're m making extra Stargate units. For example, if you would scout right now, you would see their Void Rays, uh, their, their void rays and a bunch of Sentries. So you know that it's neither Skytos nor is it... Um, uh, nor is it a, a scary attack, so you can basically make infinite drones if you see this, like... Th this basically means that you're safe forever, like... If I would see this, I would make 80 drones right away. So, scouting, definitely here as well. Now you saw what's going on, you're going for a Hydra then, that's okay. I like that you're going melee and missile now, also good. The station bit lurker then, okay. So 
So yeah, you're wondering how can I be in position for this because you don't want overlord spread, right? Although I'm not sure you would have spread the overlords even though they, even if there wouldn't be any white race. But you can patrol zerglings um, anywhere really. Just having them in front of your opponent's base as I said on the expansions is good. But also just patrolling zerglings like here, 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 here. So with four zerglings you you wouldn't miss any of this like basically you would you would could have been in position for these white race with your queens and you would have realized that your queens need to be here and your zerglings need to be here so you would have been able to split uh properly even if you don't see anything you should already be pre-split that goes for everyone by the way uh, as long as you have a zergling here this allows you to pre-split because there is no attack that can hit you at any moment very soon right so in, in, in this moment in time in the replay you're still behind because you're actually not outmining the Protoss, which you're supposed to at this point in the game. At this point in the game, Zerg is supposed to be at 80 workers on 4 base, no matter what you're playing pretty much, whereas the Protoss is still on 3 base. Now, usually on pro level, they would start a fort Nexus, but um, Protoss players on uh, lower level start a fort Nexus very late, so if you get just around 80 drones out very fast against this type of stuff, you're golden. You also don't really know you don't even know where his nexus is, by the way. But, like, you can go scout for gas timings to make sure that you can go up to 80 drones. In general, making a couple more queens is also nice after you would have scouted... You, you saw the void wrists for a slight second there with the zergling, so making more queens and pre splitting them against the void wrists is good. And now you're going for lurkers. So I assume you're gonna kill some bases because you said you're uh, ahead in economy. Okay, so we're giving up this base, but we already have another base, that's fine. Now we're attacking with lurkers. Is it possible at all that you thought you were outmining him, but you didn't realize he had this base? Is that possible? Surely no way, right? So if you see an army like this, by the way, where's this army? Here. If you see an army like this, all you need against it is Mass Lurker, nothing else. Like, the Void Rays themselves don't do anything, so just having a couple of Hydras is fine. Even just bringing your Queens with it is fine. But you just, this is not the army you want against this. The army you want is just Mass Lurker. Uh, any Bailing army would also completely destroy this, by the way. Like, completely destroy it, but since you don't, didn't go for any Bailings, Mass Lurker is the way to go. And then you're like, ah, but if I have a lot of lurkers, I will just have way more links, right? Because this army is not that gas heavy. And to that I would say yes. You would have around like half of those hydras, maybe even a little bit less. But they will be all in lurkers, like 15, 16. And then you can use all your zerglings, which you have fantastic upgrades for. You have 2-2 two, two very soon. You can use all your zerglings for counterattacks, which is great. So against this army, your zerglings are not doing anything, right? Anyways, so your zerglings should be counterattacking. Whereas your lurkers should be the ones that... Try to hold positions. Oh no, you actually get us around, get the war prism, and get the cleanup. So that was good for you. That was not good. If you guys are not good with Vipers, by the way, you don't really need to get Vipers against this. Uh, vipers would be the way, though, against this type of composition. But if you don't, if you're not comfortable with playing with Vipers, just morph as many Lurkers as you can, try to get your opponent out of position and make a Concave. So it's a very, 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 very easy, actually, against players on this level. You see this army is here. Let's say you're more Lurker heavy. Let's say you have like up to 16 Lurkers, which I really think against this, you should make like 16, 20 Lurkers. You just have a concave of this, and then with all your links and hydras, and maybe a couple extra lurkers, you go down here and you kill all of this for free. Colossus players can't engage into lurker lines, they can't. Um, they're just good if you are engaging into them, which is what you're not supposed to do, right? So now we're making more lurkers, but we're still too many hydras. Ooh, this Protoss move commanded there. Okay, now we just won the game, so let's see how... <laughs> he also just wounded all the lurkers instead of killing them. 
So this was very, very nice for you. Exactly, so you're holding the position with lurkers and you kill stuff with the other units. This running forward with the lurkers unless... <laughs> Unless you're very far ahead, is not uh, not good. Are you uh, you're you are you aware? Um, Koya, I'm just gonna call you Ko Koya. Are you aware that you can only send in replays where you lose? It's the number one rule. It's actually the only rule of Pipiga Tuesday replay submissions. You need to send in replays where you lose. Otherwise, you're gonna get a temporary ban from the <laughs> entire thing. I can't see the Protoss player winning this anymore. But even though you won, we can like. There's a lot of things you can you you can do better. I ha I have I have seen things where I think okay for sure the game is over and then. And then the other guy still wins, so I don't want to completely call it. But. You also could have gotten plus three a long time ago, by the way. Plus three missiles, pretty good, with this composition. I like that you're going counterattacking with the zerglings. That's very very good. Is. Look how strong these are. So the Zergling should not be in your main army at all with this composition. The way you avoid this crap is by just splitting your army and then going wherever the Disruptors aren't. Because the Disruptors are worse at cleaning up Lurkers than they are when they're at zoning them out. Forty-seven larva. Cruise red, by the way, not uh, existent. So that's also one thing to work on. There are a lot, of, a lot of improvement stuff that you can do. Oh shit! Did we just lose the game here? His actual army that shoots is five stalkers, two uh, two colossus, and two icons, and two immortals. Two, 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 five. That, that's his actual army, by the way. And then he has nine disruptors. That's so funny. Against this, you should ju also just make Lurkerling. You're way too Hydra heavy. Okay, so there was a move commanding going on here. Oh damn, we actually lost. Okay. Okay, this is, uh, I just want to see if there was a GG, okay, no, there wasn't. Okay, anyways, so, you didn't really outmine the Protoss, actually. You, this Protoss was mining way more comparatively to the Zerg than it should be, actually. So, if you macro up a little bit better and you go to higher drone counts, then you're actually going to outmine your Protoss opponent more than this in every single game. So, uh, let's go over this again. So, first learn a proper early game because the early game was not a build order uh, with overlord timings third base timings when to pull off gas when to pull back on gas this is number one number two um unit composition going hydra lurker ling is fine but against row bay uh, armies be more lurker heavy and use the links not in your main army but to run by um number four creep spread although that got cleared up at some point uh, I'm not sure how, like, you, you can definitely improve in terms of creep spread for sure as well, but yeah. Um, number five, go up to a higher economy. No matter what, if you play this style, you need uh, more drones because you want to trade consistently. And then number six, army movement. Instead of running into a guy that's on disruptors, try to force him to run into you. That's very, very simple. It's, it's, it, it sounds a lot harder than it actually is. You can simply do a Ling run by. And unless your opponent is Grandmaster, and I'm not kidding, unless your opponent is Grandmaster, they're gonna 1A their army there. You can see this guy has zero hotkey, so he's just F2ing everything around all the time. <clears throat> so you make a link run by here, and then you get your Lurkers here on top of this ramp, and then he needs to run in here. So in the meantime, you can completely kill his natural. Or the same, you force his army here, and then you bring your Lurkers here. Um, it's a very, very powerful move. If you have two hotkey groups, that is. Uh, so if you can manage that kind of stuff yourself, it can be very, very powerful. And yeah, that's about it. I, 
So yeah, at, at very first I would practice a normal ZVP opener because this was not it. And then if you play the way you did now, you would have definitely won this game. So, GG. Lambo, how many gases do you need for Ling Bane Hydra? Usually you play with uh, seven gases. It depends on how aggressive you want to be, like how, on what drone count. Usually with the higher drone count it's seven gas, if you want to do a super early timing it could be six gas. If you want to go late game it could be eight gas plus. You like coffee? I never drink coffee. What would have been the right time for a muta transition that game? Uh, no, there, there, there was no time for a muta transition. Because he, he didn't have upgrades on the mutas, the other the Protoss had like 3-2 upgrades. And... It is, it like, he also never had a ton of gas, so there was no need for a mutant transition, that's just very gimmicky. Do you send all of that, or leave some to defend Lurkers? If you zone out the toss army with Lurkers and kill the third with Ling Bane Hydra, do you send all of that, or leave some to defend the Lurkers? No, no, the Lurkers will defend themselves against Robo- Robo units can't just engage. If it's like Archon Immortal, then you need to leave something, but if it's Colossus Disruptor, uh, you can pretty much just leave the Lurkers there. I think I need Vipers versus Disruptor Colossus. You really don't. Uh, I After seeing this replay, I am 100% certain that you guys should not complicate things with Vipers and instead just go for surrounds with many Lurkers if you play this style. I actually do not think you need Vipers. If this was a pro game, yes. I would be like, why the hell is he not getting any Vipers? But even I don't make Vipers sometimes if my opponent goes for Disruptor styled. Um, simply because it, it's easier if you split your army. What composition should you go into with 1-1 one, one Ling opener in the mid game? 1-1 one, one Ling opener is not a thing against Protoss at all. Uh, so I don't know how, how, how to answer this, but obviously it has to be Ling Bane Ravager or Ling Bane Hydra, right? That's the only two compositions that really work with links. Against Colossus though, or no? I think you guys can just play without Vipers, yes. You, if you if you guys feel comfortable with playing with Vipers, then go for it, they're nice, they're good. You can abduct Robo Bay units, Robo Bay units are very expensive and that's great. But especially if you play Lurker, I don't think they're super necessary because... As I said before, you can simply either go for a surround, uh, this guy also move commanded into the army once and it's just over, or you force him out of position and then they're, they're zoned out anyways. What would be the best composition against Colossus plus Void Race? Like, theoretically or in an actual game? Theoretically it's probably Mass Muta. Or like Muta with a couple of Vipers. Um, or, or Corruptor with a couple of Vipers. Is it okay to skill carry pace upgrades and just go for plus 2 range? Should you get high fast enough to get plus 3? Yeah, you, you, don't, you don't really want armor upgrades against against Protoss. Rainer went Masling Bane 1-1 versus Kung Fu, yeah, but that's a troll, that wasn't serious. When is it a good time to tuck to lair? After the one drone mined 100 gas, then straight lair and add gases? No. You make the lair against Protoss, against target openers around 4 minutes 10 earliest, usually if you don't plan on doing anything aggressive. Like 4.30 is a normal time for lair. Can you talk about how you choose your upgrades versus Protoss? How do you balance melee and range upgrades? I made a video on that uh, on my YouTube. Go check that out. Um, just ch ch check the part about Protoss. Okay, so th th this replay is from Nimzo and he says struggle versus passive Terrans and trade very inefficient, I think. General feedback would be nice. 4.5k Zurich. And the replay says Oxide Ling Bane Ultra into loss. Okay, in <laughs> into loss should not be part of your build, but <laughs> that's... A <laughs> That is fine. So we're looking for general feedback here. Do you always add to control groups from eggs? How important do you think it is to do so? I think it's very important. It makes it a lot easier to play Zork. This, this is one of the reasons why Archon mode is so hard. We're trying to lose nothing new here, says Saren. Yep. I'm sure we're all familiar with that. Okay, so classic opening. Hey, you made another queen. Base. Your forces are on. So the early game looks very good. 
Your opponent is playing 3cc. You could already know that this is 3cc because there is no depot now. At this point, there would need to be a depot. You see, he is 43 out of 46. So if you want to check something, you could make a little bit of a turn to the right and you would see the lack of a depot here. So you would, uh, you would know that it is in fact 3cc. But so far everything is pretty good, you made a couple of zerglings. The moment you realize you're... I don't think you looked at that, you overlaid, did you? Our army be scrapping. Wait. <laughs> did you even realize there's a viking? No, okay. <laughs> I guess you, are, you can assume that there's a viking. The moment the viking arrives, you're supposed to go in here. You could have seen that he's still uh, producing Hellions, which is very late. This guy made his Hellions very late though. Usually I would actually think that this is Hellion number 7 and 8. Even though this is 3cc with an early starport, so... This is very late. Anyways, you, you could know that there's no early barracks for action, right? Which is pretty nice. Five queens, 14 links, lair, couple spores. You also would have known that you didn't need the spores yet. If it's like Viking into Liberators, making the sports at like 440 or something is completely fine. Which I guess is kind of what you did. 450 in this case also would fine. I also really like that you clean up your rocks right away. I really like your early game overall so far. Very good. Overlords in decent positions. This Overlord I would have pulled back. This Overlord I also would have pulled back a little bit against Viking, but I'm not even sure if you're aware that there's a Viking right now, so... Okay. Fourth base already. You, you should have already started the fourth base at this point. You're floating a lot of money now, so this is the first big mistake. It's you realize that you're making mock wretch. This is good. Everyone should do this. The moment you realize you can't spend your money anymore, and making mock mock wretches is very legit. We're going Ling Bane style, so four gas also is fine. So yeah, number one, number one I would uh, work on would be spending your money around this time because that was not good. So taking your hatchery earlier, the moment you realize you will, you, you naturally like you guys very often ask me, what is the timing for this and that? And as Zurich, there is no, there is no. Okay, this you make exactly at ninety six supply, or this uh, goes exactly down at minute four and four and twenty seconds. There are no timings like this, like, I don't know when I'm usually taking a fort hatchery, I just know when I get the minerals, naturally, and then I, I, I'm i already on the way there with the drone, and that will come with experience. But in general, you could have realized a little bit earlier that you needed that hatchery. And, yeah, you, sh you shouldn't, in general, still float that much money. You can also make extra queens, which is fine with Lingbane style, although you already have eight, I think that's probably where I would stop. And usually one thing that I would do uh, is I would over overseer scout right now or try to search with a link for a fort CC to see if it's an Ajax or not and if it's widow mines or tanks, which is nice to know because if you play this style against widow mines, I think eventually you want to go into lurkers actually. But you don't need to, you can also still play Ling Bane into Ultra if you want. Really good map vision with the Zerglings. This seems a lot of, you're doing a lot of things. Your are under like, better than I would expect it from a 4.5k player. So, uh, so far it is pretty good. Meanwhile, your opponent is playing single player. You probably should realize that, uh, like, this is what I meant with scouting earlier. Once you realize that your opponent is not doing anything, you can make more drones. In general, you should make more drones. You can, at, le at the very least, you should have had this droned up, even if he's adraxing you. But by this time, you already should have a 5th base. You can expand very, very fast. With this style, you can never really die. So what you should do is just get a, a lot of expansions and a lot of drones. And then if they go for Widow Mines like he is right now, I would probably go into like a Lurker switch or something. Okay, now we are doing a run by here. It's probably not the best use for the run by. I think you can just try to shift like some depots in the meantime. And then if the... Marines follow too far, you could have tried to aim with them, but yeah. Upgrade started a little bit too late. Mm. 
<laughs> if you would have gotten the SCVs, actually, it would have been fine. Okay, not the best trade, but this was not that terrible. In general, you should... Uh, so if you guys if you guys have a Terran that plays very passive, right? Which is this dude is clearly doing. The best time to hit is as they expand, because then they're not already fortified. Like, he had tank siege tier and he had Widowman split up. Like, as he's taking this base, then you can engage. While it's making into a planetary, he's not gonna have shit here. Like, he's, he's he will still have his tanks around here. And Widow Mind split, and then he's also split further because he needs to split, uh, like, he needs to um, defend more area, right? So, if you wanna punish these guys, first of all, you should be on a higher drone count so you can actually trade in efficiently, and then it's okay. But. Just do like a very simple one-two punch. You 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 chill here with 40 links, you run in. You, this will grab his attention and then aim with the planetary. Maybe he won't even lift it, but more likely than not, you're gonna get a good fight on this side. Very, very simple. Anyways, I I I, I would love a lurker transition here. It, even though you don't have um even though you don't have range upgrades, it's not actually a bad thing to do. Because Terran needs tanks or liberators to deal with lurkers. So, uh, if they don't have either of those, you don't even need the Hydras, you can just pretty much make Lurker only. And can you can you could just aim with them. Okay, now we're at 90 drones, this is better. Also, once you realize your opponent's playing ultra passive, you can take bases on their side. On Oxide, Oxide is the best map, by the way, for super passive turns that just want to camp. Because there are only six bases and they're not super hard to defend. So, you can eventually always get your own side and it's very hard to take something from your other side but if in this scenario for example you can take this base quite easily i think and right now like okay you're trying to try to do a run by here but you ran through the army so that's not good i think you got really lucky there that those buildings didn't explode because they were not split up at all to good minds but that was good okay now the game is kind of over, so let's see how we're gonna lose this. At this point your play is definitely to blow up this planetary. But I think we're gonna not do that, are we? I like that you're setting up a run by here, that's good. So you see his army is here? immediately you should be running in here like this is completely undefended uh, you you just kill this army here so you realize that this will be his entire army right there like this even if he was maxed he could have like 30 more supply here so yeah this you should have tried to blow this up for sure for sure so the, so the way you do this against passive turns is just you split your army into and try to uh, uh, attack their their outer bases pretty much or what you can also do is you just mine this base and then you do literally nothing until he tries taking this base and then you just attack remax attack remax attack remax game is over so th these are your options but if you if you want to try usually the going on two sides at once is the best play okay Going for a surround here. <sighs> Widow mines. All his medivacs are so low. We need a 4GG mine right now. That's what we need. This is way too late. This should have been earlier. Like at this point, you can't defend it anymore because he has a safe spot to go back to. Like if if he tries to drop drop your attack here, you can surround it and kill it. But right now he can kite back to these planetaries. Yes, planetary explorer. I don't know why, but he put two there. And now he's getting ghost as well. So at this point, you're actually not winning anymore. Uh, your opponent has a very good army composition. I have no doubt that you can still win this uh, because Terrans usually can micro this type of army at this level. As we're seeing here, he literally didn't move his bio. But yeah, overall we're trading a little bit too poor. And if you if you want to trade like this, you need to actually outmine your opponent. Which on every other map, this would have been fine. Because you could have just expanded way more. But on this map, you, you will only ever have six bases. And now this is coming too late, right? It's super important to do this as they're setting up the base. Not once it's fortified. 
I would have still tried to blow this up, by the way. You need to. Like, you can't, you can't do nothing anymore. If you, if you trade so poorly for the entire game, uh, you need to actually keep your opponent from expanding with either taking full-on engagements or sacrificing parts of your army for planetaries. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> I was like, where did the... <laughs> Woo! Okay, this ghost, where is it? Twenty-seven kills. Does Larva also count? Fifty-two. <laughs> At this point, we're completely dead. All right, there's also this path which I didn't even talk about. If you're outmining your opponent, you can also just do straight up nothing and then go for the, trying to go for a perfect army if you can control it. But I think this is the hardest way of doing it. Probably the best, but also the hardest, oh, no, specifically for this map. On other maps, I think you guys should just try to completely outmine your opponent and then suicide into them every time they try to expand, preferably while doing something else as well. But on this map, I think going Brutal is pretty good. Brutal uh, and faster. If you can control it. The, the trick with Brutal and faster is to have your Infestors split on the same uh, height as your Brutal so your Infestors should be walking like this next to them so you can cancel snipes with the fungals and you don't lose all your energy to MPs. Okay, well played. Well played is called and well played it was. So I really like most of the stuff you were doing. Uh, my main points for you are drone up a little bit higher early on. Against Widow Mines, if you're starting with Ling Bane, still just go Hydra then Lurker then. You can also go Ultras, like if they switch back to tanks or something, and then you can still play Ling Bane Ultra, but forcing them to have tanks uh, alone is very good. In this game, I'm pretty sure you would have strapped at a free win if you just made like 16 Lurkers and attacked here. You can literally run into their... If they, if they don't have tanks, you can literally run into their um, into them and burrow on top of them and then go get into their production. If you want, also with a Nidus. Nidus is also fine with the Lurkers. The first surprise Nidus, not Nidus all the time. And um, yeah, and then like I'm moving was the other thing, right? And this, d deciding when to fight, there should always be a reason as to why you're fighting. Like for example, this very first fight, he was perfectly set up and you're just deciding, okay, now's the time for some reason, right as his 2-2 was that being done. So you should always have a reason for fighting, right? Is it to deny economy that they're taking right now? Is it because they're, you think they're less fortified at this point specifically? So just thinking about that a little bit, especially against a passive player, you have some time to do that, right? Okay, let's... Um, here are some questions. You told him to go Lurkers after the opponent's Ghost Academy was already building. Is a Lurker transition wise when he already has Ghost? Yes, you need Ghost plus Liberators or Tanks. Ghosts alone don't beat Lurkers. With a Lurker transition from this 4 gas Ling Bane style, how many gases would you go up to? Immediately 8 or 10 depending on how many gases I have. But I also would have gone up to 100 drones probably. Can I go up to 80 drones, 6 hatches against 8 Drax playing with just Ling Bane? Yes, you can. Okay, so the next and last replay we're going to take a look at will be from Numi. And he said 5.3k versus 6k ZVP series was 1 1. I defended his Adept, then he defended my Link Flood. I feel like I could have joined Hydra. I knew he was going to stack it Voyager more than likely as well. My macro overall was a bit sloppy as well. So we're taking. Oh, okay, he's playing against Pili Pili, so. I know his opponent, so this is relatively high level, so we're going to take a look uh, more into the details of what exactly went wrong. Obviously, he's also simply, there's a relatively big MMR difference, so he might just have less stuff as opponent. This is, um, this can be a thing, like if you play against someone that's like 1000 MMR above, in this case it's 700 the difference. 700 MMR is a huge difference, uh, especially the higher you get, so, like, uh, 6.9k player is going to be way better than a 6.2k player. <clears throat> okay, so we're going down earlier. We're going to take a 7, 16 edge. We didn't get blocked. 
Chaos Poodle. I'm just assuming that this early game is good. Queen Queen, Four Links, Third Hatch, Drone Drone, Overlord, Third Queen. This is exactly how you're supposed to play early game. This support card is too early. So if you wanna if you wanna perfect your early game, this queen you can make it like four seconds earlier than you did. And then it spawns for the earliest Oracle, so you don't need a support here. Unless you're afraid of a proxy Oracle, which the support would be too late for, so. The support is not actually necessary. I mean two more more queens. Bring back all the overlords is good. Are you taxing him? Oh, we are taxing, okay. So the taxi is not. Taxi doesn't work against two staggered void drift, two staggered are before the third nexus. This is like the blind counter strategy. So if you see a late third nexus, this means either it's a super Stargate heavy build, so either like two Stargate Phoenix way before the third Nexus, or like three Stargate Phoenix, or the other option is an Icon drop with like six or eight gates with this timing. So basically you're doing uh, the taxi against the one thing that you're not supposed to do the taxi against. Okay, I'm gonna ask a question now instead of at the end of the replay. Did you want a taxi? That was the plan, but then you went to base void ray. Okay, so you, you didn't want to go for a taxi. So at this point, the, your opening is bad. Because you made overlord speed, you lost a bunch of stuff. And you lost your hydrogen. So his pro count is actually very bad. You're supposed to already be 66 here. So he, he messed up his probing quite a bit, so you're not actually dead by any means. Um, one thing that you guys should do against this Voidry opening is patrol Zergling here, here, and here, and here. So you see where where the Voidrays are coming from. So then this would never happen, but also don't 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 build your Hydrogen at the one location that literally every single Voidray player attacks first. They always go here to check this base and then go into the main. So, yeah, but <laughs> you build it again pretty exposed. Like, build your higher than here or in the natural. And this will never happen. At this moment in time, you also are supposed to already have an Evo Chamber. No matter what you're doing. These are good catches. You're even getting a Void Ray for free here. Oof. Yeah, also, don't go Lurker then if you don't know what's happening. So, your opponent's playing Sky Toss. Like, straight Sky Toss. Um, when I want to play Lurkers, or if I if I play Lurkers, what I do is I make an Overseer and go like this, very early on, or like this. And I think you should do that in general to see also if it's Robo Bay or not. Because if I, for example, play Hydra Bane, I also want to know that, that I should go Hive Lurker then instead uh, against a Robo Bay, for example, or, or that I just in general don't attack into a guy going 3 base Colossus or something like that, right? So a follow-up scout is super nice. One thing that he's not doing, usually that you can also check for is if he's getting plus one air weapon, so I'm very surprised he isn't actually, I think that's a mistake. And you could also just check here and see that there's a, no high templars, at this point there would already be high templars if he was playing standard, so. This uh, infestation build is fine, lurker than not so much. We should be making drones already now, 14 hydras is more than enough to deal with the void race. Or you're even morphing lurkers. Oh, what the hell? So if you see the avoiders are going away here, you should leave units here so they so they can't get here. So you don't need to split up your army. So this is bad army movement at, at, at this point. Okay, it's getting two spores, getting infestation pit before we... No, we are... Is this a hive? No. I can't tell because of your pizza, pizza hatchery skin. 
Ik moet los rijden door de nekken. Why are they here? <laughs> Please. Don't make them there again. If you remake the, them here, I'm gonna lose it. Okay, no, you're like, fuck it. Oh! Could have won that fight, I think. The moment you see his army come, you're supposed to start a step away from the Kalins, and I think you just win the game. All these hydras need to shoot the interceptors right now, so... You were supposed to start a step towards the left, and then start a step back, so that so they don't shoot the adapts either. And instead just shoot the interceptors. You need to kill the interceptors ASAP. You're also start stepping forward is bad. These cannons were firing this entire time. This cannon has six kills. There's one, but this can do a lot of damage. And you're doing all of this without upgrades. So if you want to hit a Hydra timing, if that's your general game plan against Void Ray Carrier, then you should probably go double upgrades. Uh, missile Carapace, especially if you want to do a late Hydra timing. I know this was not your initial game plan, and this kind of just was on the fly. Probably you were like, okay, whatever, let's just go and attack because you felt the need to do so. Lurkers without range are not good against anything, like not even against Storm. They don't zone out anything. Uh, Storm just straight up outranges them, so... Like, uh, yeah, they, like don't don't make Lurkers ever like this without the upgrades, without Hive, ever. No matter what you're up against, they're not good. But in general, you could have definitely won this game if you just defended the Warders a little bit better. <laughs> You're making more lurkers. Why? You, what, what are these lurkers for against the adepts without glaives? How many adepts are there? One. Are they for the cannons? Alright. <laughs> okay. Okay, and now, now we're just dead, yeah. We have unupgraded Hydras against plus two carriers. Does, doesn't matter how many Hydras you have, you're not gonna win against carriers, so... So don't don't forget upgrades, but... This game was kind of a weird one, because you planned on going for the Taxi, so you didn't really plan on going for Macro, but the moment you go for Macro, you need an Evo Chamber. Very important, actually. And then, if you wanna go for a Hydra timing, bring your Queens, I think, as well. In general, one thing that can completely change everything for you is to just patrol Zerglings to see where the Void Rays are flying, because you were out of position for the Void Rays like 20 times. Don't put your attack structures here against Void Rays as well. Those are my main things. The creep spread and stuff. Macro, like, and you were floating a bunch, but this because you lost your Hydra then, and then you had a little bit too, too little gas. I think Macro was fine. Creep spread. Okay, the Queens were occupied, that's okay. But I think it's, it was mainly... Not a good Voyager defense, and then... And then, um... Yeah, you're not supposed to start Overlords, but if your opponent doesn't have a third Nexus, and you could have had way more drones, like way more drones. You can defend even those two, two base, two, two target Voyager, you can... First of all, immediately go to 66 drones, and you're fine. Then, and you're actually way up in workers, so... So yeah, let's see if there's any questions in the chat. What league is this? This was... So, Pili Pili is obviously Grandmaster, right? He's a pro gamer. Um, and we were looking at Numi, who's 5.3k MMR. How do you micro Hydras versus Carriers? Do I target fire the Carriers? Unless the Carriers randomly fly above your Hydras? No, you just A-move them and try to kill the Interceptors. You're just gonna lose all your Hydras if you try to run under the Carriers. How many gases on AD drone Hydraling Bane Pressure? Um, it's 7 or 6, depending on which... Like, how Hydra heavy you wanna be. I actually think 6 is fine. Zero seven is also okay. What do you do versus Turtle Skytas if they go High Templar? 
uh, what turtles Kytos if they go high you just deny their forward base and make a hundred drones and then you play late game from miles ahead also there is no like you can't actually afford carrier production and high templars on three base and if they go Skytos like this, you can always deny their fort base, actually. Always. Like, you can go for a Hydra Queen timing with like 80 something workers. If there's a fort base, and you can always kill it. Always, always, always. Preferably with double upgrades already. And then you basically play. You, you, you guys watched the late game earlier that I played against Mana. That's what you play, but I played it from even. And you guys can play that from miles ahead. Like, make a couple of Ultras, add some Infestors, add some Vipers. <laughs> That kind of stuff. If you scout two stargates, should you throw down a spire immediately or should you wait until you're sure it's Skytos? No, no, no. You make Hydras. Hydras, no spire against Skytos. Straight up Skytos. Especially against the Master Warrior shit. The, the, the only stuff that uh, straight Corruptors are very good against are, are is if they go straight carriers. But against Void Race, you don't really want to go. Mass Corruptor, even though I actually think that can also work, but that's a little bit. It's, not that simple. Like, I think it's a lot easier for you guys if you just Queen Hydra timing against this. Off a lot of drones, and then if they don't, if they just turtle with mass cannon, you take the entire map, cover it in creep, make a million spores, and then you can do whatever you want. 